What do all these events have in common? They all involve things that move, and they all use force. People seem to enjoy moving things. If an object is standing still, someone will eventually want to pull on it, or push on it, change its direction, change its shape, or move it somewhere else. None of this would be possible without force. Force is simply a pull. Or it could be a push. Or a push that causes something to move. If an object is already moving, force can cause it to stop or change its motion. Suppose you don't like the shape of an object. Force can be used to change it into some other form. Controlling force has enabled us to literally move mountains and develop very complex ways of moving ourselves. Force is called a prime mover because it causes motion. There are other influences that are not force, but they are still prime movers because they act like force and cause some kind of motion. For example, liquids are forced or pushed through tubes by pressure. Without pressure, water would not flow from the tower through the pipes into the taps. Heat is moved from warm areas to cold, a motion which is caused by temperature difference. This is why we wear heavy clothing in the winter. It's to prevent the warm air next to our bodies from moving towards the cold air outside. We've learned to put the power of electricity to work, but without voltage, we would be unable to move electrons through the wires and the complex circuits including those that are showing you this program. The pressure that moves fluids, the temperature difference that moves heat, and the voltage that causes electricity to flow are all prime movers. They all act like force because they cause motion. A prime mover, such as force, pressure, or voltage, usually acts as a system. Sometimes there are subsystems working within the system. A good example of many systems working together is the car. The mechanical system uses force to keep the 14,000-odd parts moving. The electrical system uses voltage to move electricity through the ignition and the accessories. Pressure in the fluid system moves things like brake fluid, antifreeze, and gas. The thermal system uses temperature difference to move heat away from the engine. Leonard is a mechanic who identifies these four systems when he's troubleshooting. Okay, this car has an obvious problem that is missing. Now, what we need to do is we need to find out exactly what the problems are. Now, the problem could be either in the cooling system, you know, it could be in the charging system, or it could be in the thermal system, but we're going to have to break it down in order to find out exactly what's wrong. What we'll do, we got the car hooked up to our scope, we'll check our RPMs, we'll check our vacuum, and we'll check our amp meters and see exactly what the problems are. Number one, we're going to take a look at the pattern, we'll raise the pattern up, so we can identify. If we look at our pattern, we can see some inconsistencies 
in the height of our pattern, so that's telling us a particular problem that we're looking for. It's telling us a couple of things, that either we got not enough voltage going to the secondary system, or we got too much voltage going to the secondary system. In order to find that, we can identify it here on the scope. If we look at our pattern, we look at that spark line just running across, it indicates that number 1843, number 3, has a direct problem to it. And what it's telling us is that the spark plug gap is too wide. What we'll have to do is to remove the spark plug and regap the spark plug gap to ensure that it gets the proper clearance. After we have replaced the spark plugs and, and these kind of things, and it didn't work, then we're going to have to go on to further things. We're going to have to take a compression check to find out if there's any mechanical problems within. Or uh, we might even have to go to the fuel system to try and see if the injectors are clogged up, whether we might have to blow them out or whatever. What we really need to do is be able to do a complete diagnosis and find out the particular problems this car and bring it back to factory specifications. This is a common practice among technicians who deal with complicated systems. They break them down into mechanical, thermal, electrical, and fluid subsystems. By looking at systems separately, problems become easier to identify. Technology sometimes seems complicated and difficult to understand. But when the technology is broken down into its basic systems, and the forces, or prime movers, are identified, it not only becomes easier to understand the machines, it helps us build better ones for the future. Wow.